Hey, thanks for joining today's webinar. I'm here with Chuck Maselli, the e-learning consultant, and today we will be demoing the SPIB e-learning Canadian course. Chuck, uh, whenever you're ready. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate to you the Canadian course. Um, we made a few changes to make this more applicable to the Canadian student. Um, the course is divided into three sections. One is the lesson content. The second section is a uh, rules review drill section. And the last section is video not test and video not review. I'm going to jump right into the uh, structure of the lesson content. Now, the way the lesson content is organized, we have some basic introductory introductory material to cover for the student to build a good foundation. Then we talk about the American Softwood Lumber Standard and define all the defects for them. Then we get into math and measurement and sizing of knots, which is the heart of the program. And then we ask them to start memorizing the grading rule. Now, the way these lessons are structured is uh, basic introductory material first. This first lesson is real short. Try to get the student used to the navigation. We talk uh, about how this course is designed specifically for lumber graders, by lumber graders, and how this will help them do a better job. We talk first about what is dimension lumber. We give them a definition of dimension lumber. Um, and we talk about how the course is divided into individual lessons. We have screenshots from the different lessons. Um, we have uh, one series of lessons to help familiarize them with all the different defects and characteristics that affect the lumber grade. Uh, we have lessons on learning how to read a tape measure, working with basic fractions. And we talk about the total measurement technique, which is a technique for learning how to grade the knots without actually having to measure anything, just comparing what they would measure to the width of the piece. And then we talk about why lumber grading rules are important. They're important to the mill owners uh, and their decisions that the grader makes is going to affect the grade yield at the mill and why the lumber grader is important in that respect. And then we talk about why standardizing lumber grading rules uh, um, are important to the customers of lumber. And then again, we emphasize the total measurement technique is going to provide them an easy way to evaluate the knots on the chain. And then there's a short quiz. Now, the quizzes are organized where um, if they get the answer correct, it tells them they're correct. The first one here is the definition of dimension lumber. When it's right, you can go to the next question. And then what about this course will make you a better lumber grader? That was the total measurement technique. Very good. If you're correct, go to the next question. And what is grade yield? Let's say the student didn't pick that up in the lesson, and he thinks that's the average number of board feet a mill produces from a log. If he gets that answer incorrect, now he has the option to review the lesson and try again. If he clicks here, it takes him right back to where the answer is. Okay, then he can return to the quiz and he can put the correct answer in now. So immediate feedback. When he completes the quiz, in this particular quiz, he had to get all four right to open up the next lesson. This forces them to go through the lessons in sequence. Now. Here we, we missed one. The computer recorded that fact. We only got a 75%. Now we tell him he failed the quiz. He does not have to save his score. And this is important. The way the course is organized is the student can save only the scores they're personally satisfied with. So he can click Next and actually restart this lesson. And he can quickly navigate back to the quiz if he knows he can pass it or review the lesson if he needs to. And then he can take the quiz over again and um, get them all correct.
Now we tell him congratulations, well done, you passed. Now he can save his score and he can move on to the next, which will open up the next lesson when he saves a passing score. Okay, so once we uh, familiarize the student with how the lessons work, um, we, uh, in this introductory section, um, talk about the Canadian grading rule system, where two-inch dimension comes from, and then we included a new lesson here called Canadian Species and Species Group. In Canada, the, the uh, recognition of different species and species groups is very important, and so we added a new lesson to cover that. Um, in the Canadian grading rule system, we talk primarily about the NLGA, uh, how um, the Canadian Lumber Standards Accreditation Board is interacts with NLGA and ALSC. Um, we show here that in Canada that NLGA is a standard grading rules agency for the for Canada. They provide an official interpretation of all the grading rules for all the agencies in Canada. They also supply a Canadian Lumber Grading Manual that's an uh, effective learning tool also. And then there's a short quiz there to make sure we understand how the Canadian system is organized. Then we talk about the origins of two-inch dimension lumber. This again is to give the student a good foundation of all the terminology used in lumber grading. We define the basic parts of a, of a pine tree. Um, anytime you see a highlighted word here, the student can actually click on those and it takes them to a glossary that defines those words. We don't test on that material. That's just to encourage learning. Make sure they understand all the terms properly. We talk about how sawing lumber from pine logs will create defects, and how the branches will pass through the board and create knots, which is one of the most important defects they need to learn to analyze. And we talk about drying defects and how those uh, enter the lumber, and then how dressing can cause defects. And we talk about nominal size and dress sizes of lumber and explain the differences between the narrows and the wides, the narrows being on a half inch, the wides on a quarter inch, why that is. Again, basic terms, thickness, width, wide face, edge, end, and what the dimension lumber is used for. Then once we cover those basic terminology, we added this Canadian Species and Species Groups lessons. In Canada, it's very important. We have so many different species of trees used to produce dimension lumber there. Um, we define the Canadian Species and Species Groups that can be stamped at each mill. Um, we talk about why these groups are separated. They have different design values. And uh, we talk about the northern species group being a bracket group that we can include species in. And these have the lowest design values. Um, then we talk about uh, which species can be included in each of the various groups. And this is important for the student to understand which species can be included so they can learn eventually how to identify the ones that don't belong. Um, to facilitate this, we included a regional map that shows the different forest types in Canada. And the student can look at the map, locate his mill, and understand which forest type he's located in. And then they can click here to find out in that forest type which species he would actually encounter at that mill. Now, some of the species he encounters will be the ones they normally grade mark, and some of them won't be. And the goal is to be able to identify the ones that don't belong. So we broke this into two sections. We have uh, Western Canada and Eastern Canada. Um, in Western Canada, COFI, the Council of Forest Industries, has actually de developed a species 
uh, spreadsheet uh, descriptions and for uh, help to identify the different species. Um, they can click here and actually print this out and use this as a overview. Um, species identification takes a lot of experience and these tips and lessons have to be used in conjunction with an experienced uh, lumber inspector or quality control supervisor who knows how to identify the various species at the plant. Now, um, we start out with the western region, as I mentioned, and spruce pine fir is the biggest species group. It covers east to west. In the west, the SPF includes the white spruce, Engelman spruce, lodgepole pine, and alpine fir. Now, done here is the student can click on these and actually get a species ID page. These will correspond to the Kofi ID and it shows the color and appearance of the wood and the grain and the texture of the wood and there's lots of pictures to help illustrate that. Now all of these pages are printable and what we suggest the student does is print out the Kofi uh, shorthand rules card and then include that with these individual species pages to use as a reference to make them more expert at identifying the species at their plant. Now this is the way all of these pages are organized. We talk about each species, what it's used for, and then have the um, ID pages available for every single one. And once these are printed out, the student can flip through these and compare, and you can really see the differences between the different species. Again, now, every, every species and species group that grade mark in Canada is covered, and once we uh, cover the western species group, we get into the eastern species, and it's organized exactly the same way. So this is a very helpful students become a more expert on how to identify the various species they'll encounter at their plant. So once we cover this basic foundation material of terminology and species groups, we get into defining all the point, what we're focused on is just understanding the different defects. The first group we cover are the manufacturing defects, which would be wane, saw cuts, beveled skips, rabbited edge, double arbor mismatch, cross breaks, and again, all these definitions are right out of the NGR, the National Grading Rule. And then once we cover machine bites, machine gouge, machine offsets, every, every defect that's covered in the NGR, there's a summary, and before we have a quiz, we go right into the uh, next lesson, which is going to cover the drying defects. This page is a little slow to load here this morning. Okay, we talk about all the different drying defects, bow, twist, crook, cup, lots of photos, how those straight, splits, checks, and again, lots of pictures. We talk about under dried lumber, what that means, the difference between KD19 and KD15, and then there's a summary there. And once we cover the drying defects, we talk about the knots. And again, we're not asking them to learn how to grade anything at this point. We're just trying to get all the terminology correct. We talk about the difference between sound knots and unsound knots, lots of pictures that would take a lot of time to go through the shed and find all these examples. Case knots with the K, firm knots, partially encased knots. Try to get a, a clear understanding of each type of knot quality. Knot spacing, and then there's a summary there. Okay, so after we cover that, we talk about each individual grade. We, the standard course includes the structural grades number one, number two, number three. And then uh, in Canada, a lot of mills grade construction standard and utility, the light framing grades. 
and then select structural and stud grade can also be added to the cores. Now, these uh, extra grades would include not tests and rules review to cover those also. And this is, again, just defining the grades and the relationship to one another, not asking the student to memorize any grade rules yet. And then the, the, the next section, we talk about math and measurement basic tools for learning to grade lumber. We talk basic fractions. Again, we don't do any numerators or denominators. We're just going to learn basic fractions. Quarters, thirds, halves, two-thirds, and three-fourths. These are the uh, only fractions used in describing all the grading rules. We show how these are going to apply to the face and to the edge. Um, we talk about what a basic fraction is. When you cut something in half, you create two pieces. Each piece is called a half, one thing divided by two. Now, this is all real basic bigger, and uh, they don't like to admit that to the instructor or in front of other students. So by learning this or going through it quickly in the course, they can learn this without any pressure on them and without it feeling that they're uh, being judged on how well they understand fractions. So we talk about what a quarter is, how that applies to the white face, and we talk about two-thirds. We show uh, two-thirds versus a third, and then again how that applies to the white face, and three-fourths, and how that applies to the white face. Then we're going to apply these same fractions to the edge of the piece, and there's lots of interaction in this lesson without testing. So it encourages the student to learn on their own, at their own pace. If he selects three quarters of an inch, he wants to find that highlighted here on the edge. Let's say he's not sure between three-fourths, two-thirds. If he gets it wrong, it tells him he's wrong. When he clicks the correct one, it tells him he's correct. So he can do that on the edge and for all these fractions on the white face. Then after we talk about the basic fractions, we look at proportion for lumber graders. There's lots of interactivity in that lesson. And then we get into reading the tape measure. Again, the same thing applies here. A lot of people don't want to admit they don't know how to read a tape measure. So we're going to show them. We're, we're going to look at sixteenths, eighths, quarters, and a half. We show them a tape measure. The inch is about the size of your thumb, a half inch about the size of tip. those marks come from. The half inch mark is the largest mark on the tape because that creates the largest fraction. They can touch the tape and see the half inch mark. Then we explain that when you have two pieces and you cut them all in four, you're going to get quarters. And we show those marks and how they relate to each other. And then four pieces, cut them all in half, you create eighths. We show each one of the eighths. And then the last one is sixteenth. You have eight pieces cut all in half. You're going to create 16 pieces. Each one's called the 16th. We show how the even numbers fall on the eighth inch marks and the quarter inch and half marks. And then, again, lots of interactivity with no testing. They can move the pointer around to review what each mark is. And then they can actually practice. First thing we do is practice adding up some of these fractions so they get a feel for how big the fraction is and how these fractions fit together. Let's say he selects this equation here, an eighth plus a sixteenth. He's not quite sure where that's at. He, if he clicks the, if he puts it in the wrong location, he'll say, nope, try again. Press the red and green fractions in the equation, you can actually see this add up. There's an 8. And then there's a 16. And you can move that over there and see that that's the correct answer. Let's be a little fussy this morning. Oh, 
Okay, and then lots of lots of practice on those equations. See if they can identify these correctly. Oops. We have every every mark on the table. Then there's a short quiz there at the end where they can actually measure some lines with a, with a tape measure and see if they can get the correct answer. All right, once we cover all the basic material there, then we get into the heart of the program, which is sizing up knots and two-inch dimensional lumber. We take the same approach here where we're going to cover basic terminology first. Then we're going to explain how to measure different shapes of knots, and then we're going to have a lesson that explains this total measurement technique and allow them to practice. So this part of the program or the course uh, takes the most time and is the most involved. And again, this is the first time this total measurement technique has been organized in structured lessons step by step on how to learn and apply this technique. Okay, first we're going to talk about knot quality, shape, and location. We talk about how um, there's different quality, shapes, and locations of knots. Uh, are limited by the whole size. We give them a table there to show that, emphasize that. Then we talk about the different shapes of knots. Okay, the first knot shape we define is what's a simple knot. Shows on one side, shows on the other side, or shows on one face and doesn't go all the way through. Um, then we talk about uh, the spike knot, how it shows on the edge and goes inside to the pit. A lot of times this is hard to visualize, requires a lot of drawings on the lumber. Here they can see what a three-face knot is. And then we talk about a wide-face spike knot appearing on the edge white face and then going inside to the pit. Then we talk next about knot location. Center line, combination, edge knot, and displaceable knot. What's the difference between each? Uh, what's a center line knot? Averages out to the middle. We talk about edge knots. You can have different shapes on the edge, a spike knot, three-face knot, uh, simple edge knot on the edge. And then we talk about knot location. What is a displaceable knot? And what are combination knots? And how combination knots are defined? And then there's a summary. So again, we're not learning how to grade these knots yet, just getting the basic terminology down. OK, after we've got the terminology, now we're going to learn how to measure the different shapes. And what we emphasize here is that it's not critically important that they can actually calculate the knot size. What we're looking for here is can they evaluate quickly if the knot is too big for the grade. And we do that by emphasizing what parts of the knot has to be measured. And we're going to call this the total measurement technique. Okay. First, we explain that the knots are measured at the widest point across the width within the cross-section. And then we talk about what is a cross-section. We show example here of a, of a simple edge knot and how it appears in the cross-section. And then we talk about how we're going to apply the total measurement technique to all these different shapes. The first shape is a simple knot. We measure one side, the other side, add together and divide by two. The next one is a um, Simple knot again, showing the end view cross section and the total measurement line. And then we give them practice. Now in Canada, it's important for the student to be able to actually calculate the size of the knots on the um, test that they have to take to earn a grading ticket. So in here, we included the actual formulas for each one of the knot shapes and how, how the knot size is determined. These are 
from the NGR, and uh, we have those included for each shape. There's a practice here where the student can actually drag the tape and actually measure the knot and determine the knot size. If he's correct, it tells him he's correct. If it's incorrect, it says, please try again. This is, again, more interaction within the program that's not scored. This encourages the student to keep learning. And then we talk about the simple knot that doesn't pass all the way through the piece and explain how this is an estimate because you can't cut the lumber open on the chain. And um, again, the knot size, how to measure those when they go into the pit, the formula here. Spike knots, they can click on the board, actually see the knot inside the piece. The bright green line is the part you're going to measure from the edge to the pit. And then, again, here's how the formulas are for different types of spike knots they might encounter. And again, practice, and then when the knot doesn't go all the way through, what to do with it. Um, see if they learn that concept. This one here is taking a third the edge, so they only measure a third the distance to the pit. And then the three-face knot is one of the more difficult ones for them to learn. We define here between the edge of the piece and the edge of the knot the space called the gap. And we show them how they can use the amount on the edge to estimate how much of the gap they need to use. And again, this includes the measurement of the simple knot, and then we talk about the measurement of the spike knot on the edge. The part is just like a spike knot on the edge. So we go through all that, and then they have the opportunity to practice to see if they've got it. And there's several pages of those. They can drag the tape. And the last one is um, of the principal uh, shapes of that is the white face spike knot. We explain how that is two knots together, a spike knot and a simple knot on the white face. We show how. This one's only penetrating half the width, so we'd only use half the distance for the total measurement. And then the spike knot, we use the total distance of the spike. And more practice there to see that they've got it. Okay? So this lesson um, covers all the basic shapes of knots. Now, in Canada, especially with the spruce pine fir, we get a lot of edge-to-edge -edge knots that go all the way through the piece. These are sometimes called edge-to-edge white-face knots and edge-to-edge white-face-to-white-face knots. And we explain how these are just combinations of shapes they've already learned how to measure, okay? And what, what would be the total measurement or the bright green line for each part of that knot. It's explained here. Again, we have uh, quite a few examples, okay, and we go through each one of those types. Then we talk about the measurement of unsound knots and holes is the same, but they're limited differently in number one, and number two, and number three. And then there's a summary at the end here. And we built this little widget here to summarize the whole lesson. They can actually click this arrow, and it shows the total measurement for each of the knot. For example, this one's going three-fourths the way through, so three-fourths of the knot is used for the total measurement all the way through all of it, and just goes all the way through all the different shapes they might encounter. They can see how those are related to each other. This, this proved quite helpful. And the uh, concept of total measurement, we go further into <clears throat> how to use this total measurement technique when just looking at a knot and determining the grade without measuring anything. Okay, this, this is the total measurement shorthand rules, which is on the back of our shorthand grading rules. And we suggest that each student print these out before they take the lesson. These are also available online. Oh, 
Okay, understanding the total measurement technique, we're going to show how we're going to use this bright green line and compare it to the width of the piece and explain that the knot size is always half of our total measurement. Okay, so we go through that, then we talk about um, the total measurement rules can be applied to any shape knot for number one, number two, and number three. We talk about the uh, total measurement being about a half, two-thirds, or the full face, and, and in combination knots, we talk about wood left and wood over. So we'll explain that as we go through this lesson. And we have lots of diagrams to illustrate those points. Here's an example of wood left on the total measurement and the total measurement being wider than the piece or the total measurement being over. We also included green lumber grading rules for total measurement too, and some of the mills produce green lumber. We explain why this technique is easier to use because you're estimating something smaller than the total uh, measurement for the knot when we talk about wood left or wood over. And then we have, again, interaction in the lesson without testing to see if they're understanding what's the total measurement for this knot would be this line, and that's a, um, about two-thirds the face of the piece, so that's the correct. You can look at the total measurement rules here, about two-thirds the face is going to be a number two. And then there's just lots of examples for all the different shapes. They can uh, select which lines represent the total measurement for the knot, and then select which rule they think would apply, and they can pop up the rules anytime they need them within the lesson. So there's lots of examples there, and there's a good quiz, long quiz at the end. So once they get through uh, the lesson on grading knots using total measurement, we actually give them practice or simulation with video clips. Okay, the, uh, this lesson here is going to have several videos in here where they can look at the knot from all angles and then they can decide what grade it is and uh, they can check their answers against the total measurement rules. And we built this table that's used in the knot, video knot test section where they can pick out whether they want to understand standard rule for edge or combination knots and whatever width they're attempting to learn. It shows that one inch knots allowed on a number one two by four, that's a two inch total measurement, that's a quarter of an inch past half. So it gives the exact amount in, in this shorthand rule. Okay, now the way these videos are organized here, they can play the video and then can click show me and it'll actually show them what to measure on each face and then compare that to the width of the piece. Okay. You can look at each face, that's what to measure on one face, there's the measurement on the other face, here's how the knot passes through the edge and this is the total measurement. Okay. And we give them lots and lots of examples here to apply this technique. You can click show me and we'll go through step by step on each one. There's many knots of each width and thickness. If they don't grade the wider width, they can just look at the width that they grade. And there's a summary there. Now once they've completed this knot section, we recommend that they jump to the knot test section where they actually can start to test themselves to see if they're learning and understanding this technique. Now this really was the brainchild for the program was the video knot section. Um, as you know, uh, it takes a long time for a grader to learn to grade knots and we have to go through packs and packs of lumber to find different examples to show them. and. It's very time consuming, but here they've got over 1,500 different boards they can grade. And the way the test is designed is they can press the play button, look at the knot, 
and decide what grade they think it is. If they get it wrong, it'll tell them it's wrong, and this is a number one piece, and we can collect, or he can click the rules button and actually pull up the rule for number one, and he can see we were looking at combination knots and two by fours, and a number one combination knot is uh, one and a half inches allowed. That's a total measurement of three inches. That means he has to have a half inch of wood left. Okay, and he can filter this by grade. Just look at the number one. Okay, he can look at the piece as many times as he wants to, and then go to the next piece. Now, if he if he gets it correct, it gives him immediate feedback that he's correct. Now, what we ask them to do is to go through this test uh, until they can get um, 20 pieces correct in a row. So if they miss one, they can bail out of the test, come back, and start over. Okay. Once they've got 20 pieces correct in a row, we print them a certificate that says they've successfully demonstrated their ability to grade that particular knot in, um, in that particular category. As you know, some graders can get very proficient grading edge knots and 2 by 4s but when they get on combination knots and 2 by 10s or 2 by 12s they might have a lot of problems, or vice versa. So this section can also be used in conjunction with the supervisor. We can have the student go through when he feels ready to try to take a 20-piece knot test and just record that score for each category and then the supervisor can come back and look and see where that student's having the most problem and have him repeat those tests until he's very proficient and can produce a 20% score. The uh, last, so we recommend that they jump to that section. This section is available all the time. So the experienced students can go in here and take these knot tests anytime they want to. Now the last series of lessons covered the actual grading rules. So the way these lessons are organized is we try to present the student with everything he would need to memorize the rules for each defect. We have this shorthand rules card. As I mentioned, this is the back of the total measurement rules where we emphasize the, the worst the defect can be um, in each category. For example, number one, Wayne, Wayne, the maximum for a quarter length is half the edge and a third the face. So what we do here is when we get to observing and evaluating number one, Wayne, we emphasize half the edge and a third the face. And uh, we explain, we highlight that is the part that we want them to memorize. We have a uh, picture, a third the face, and a half the edge. We tell them a penny will fit on half the edge. A penny is about a three-quarter inch nailing edge. That's a tip that comes from the lumber inspector. That's not in the book anywhere. So on this one page, he has a picture of the worst the defect can be. He has highlighted what we want him to memorize. He has the shorthand rules card, which corresponds to what we want him to memorize. And then we have the actual rule from the NGR that he can click on. This is the rule from the book. Okay, So he has the graders, inspectors tip, pictures, additional photos, shorthand rules, and the actual grading rule on each page for every defect. Okay, Then we talk about number two wing, number three wing. And then once he's studied number one, number two, and number three wing, he's done with that defect he can go to the next defect or he can go to the rules review. Okay. Now the rules review is a separate section that helps the student memorize all the grading rules. And the way this is designed is more of a drill than a test. It's to help memorize. Okay. The way it's organized, there's 18 questions for each defect. One, we show them a picture and ask them to select the correct grade. One time we show them the shorthand rule and ask them to select the correct grade. And one time we show them the grading rule and ask them to pick uh, the correct grade. So these, there'll be nine questions, three for number one, three for number two, and three for number three. 
those are given to them twice. And what we instruct the student to do is to go through this test until he can get them all right. Okay, so um, this first picture is going to be number three. He submits it. If it's right, it tells him to go on to the next one. Here we present the rule, half inch nail and edge and half the face. That's number two. We could submit that and go to the next question. Three sixteenths inch nailing edge. So these are coming up at random. Okay, here's the grade name. Now, when we present the grade name here, we put the rules in order. Again, this is not so much a test as to help them memorize the three rules: half the edge and a third to face, half inch nailing edge, half the face, three sixteenths inch nailing edge, and three fourths to face for number three. Okay, so this is number one. So again, this is a drill. Now, if he gets it wrong, I'll get the next one wrong here. Um, it'll tell him it's wrong. Now, uh, he has the opportunity. He can restart the quiz right here because his goal is to get through this and get them all right before he moves to the next section. Okay, so he can restart the quiz over. And the more he does this, the more repetitive it is, the more it drives the rule into their memory. So once he's completed that rules review for that defect, he can go on to the next defect, organize the same way, lots of pictures. Um, the tip that comes from the instructor that's not in the book, for example, on skip, uh, it's a sixteenth of an inch or less if you can still see the east edge. Okay, And then uh, eighth of an inch when approach a sharp edge. So that's the same, and then he can go to the rules review for skip and move on to the next defect. And we cover all the defects in the NGR. And these are specific for the Canadian species because Canadian species have different decay than what you might find in Southern Pie, so the rules reviews are modified for that. And then once he's completed that rules review, and all the lesson content, he earns a certificate for completing this first section, the lesson content. Then he can go and take his knot test for just the knots that they grade at his particular mill. Some of the mills just grade two by four, some two by four, two by sixes, and some various combinations of all widths. So each category will we will supply an individual certificate for when the graders completed that. So you can, the grader can demonstrate his proficiency. And the rules review section is also somewhat standalone. Um, if you have experienced graders that you feel already know the rules, when they come to this section, they can take the rules review drill as a refresher and a verification for you that they know all the grading rules. And the not test can be used the same way as a separate section for the experienced graders. The last section is a not review section. This is not a test. What we've done here is we've organized the knots by grade. This is a handy review and it's also good for instructing new graders that never graded a knot before. What we found is if you have a new grader look at multiple pieces of number one this is combination knots, um, they can get a feel for how big the knots can be in each grade. Okay? And he can see these are relatively small knots taking up a small percentage of the cross section. And then he can go on and look at number three knots. That's what we recommend after he looks at the ones to look at the threes and he'll see a significant difference in the size of those knots in terms of the amount of cross section it takes up. You can see these are quite a bit larger. Okay, So he can actually get a feel for which knots go into which grade without even knowing how to measure or grade those knots. Okay? And then the, we'd ask him to go through the number two. So that gives you a quick overview of everything that's in the course. Um, the course can be used for new students and, and for experienced students and for anyone who just wants to know and understand 
how dimension lumber is graded. They can complete the lesson content. They don't have to become proficient at grading knots or necessarily memorizing all the rules. So it can be used by a lot of different folks in the lumber industry for various purposes. So that, that pretty well gives you a, a quick overview of what's contained in the course. Luke, um, you want to tell them if they have any questions where they can go? Sure. You can go online, spib.org. Uh, just visit our contact page there and submit questions or by email, spib at spib.org. Uh, send us an email anytime with any questions and we will get back to you.